have to do it, which gets annoying. And uh, Jeremy will talk a little bit about you know some of those scripts that we might use. So essentially, you know, in between the the listening pipe that's reading the data in and the pipe that sends the data out, you add another pipe, which is for your script that you'll write. Essentially, something like NetSed or maybe your uh, maybe your um, maybe your uh, sorry, uh, lose my train of thought there. Anything that you would need to modify to, you know, capture the state of the application, replace data that's going across the stream, things like that. Um, so basically, you end up writing a custom Python script that reads the data, does regexes, captures data, whatever, Python, Perl, whatever your uh, choice is there. Um, you end up writing this code, reading standard input, throwing it standard out, or maybe you even write the socket listener. And I've rewritten this code so many times that. At some point, I just said, why am I continually rewriting this same code or like, copy and pasting this little code? It, it never evolves. It never gives me more advanced capabilities. And it's always this kind of, kind of complex, brittle machinery that I've, to get my, you know, to get traffic to my scripts. So uh, you know, th that was another thing just kicking around in the back of my head of how can we make this better? So just to sum all of that up, why is this annoying? Because we often end up making a Rube Gorber Rube Goldberg style machine or this big kludge of a behemoth just to start our assessment, just to get at that stream of data and just to like start manipulating things. And the problem with that is there's many moving parts. It's always done a little bit differently per application. Any one misconfiguration in any one part can lead to this thing just not working and it can really be a test on your sanity trying to figure it out sometimes because hey what's going on like oh the ARP spoofing didn't get all the packets and we, we were like there has to be a better system there should be a better tool that can do this automatically because hey we can do this very mechanically but why is it not being done for us very mechanically so uh, you want to take this one yeah. okay so w one of the things that we will say is that you know, if you if you're going up against the known protocols, especially HTTP, but there are other you know pr protocols that proxies exist for. So if you're going up against these, there are really great uh, proxies like Burp or Peros or e even PFI, which is uh, a kind of smaller one. I guess m more people might not be familiar with, but it, it's kind of a generic TCP proxy that you know isn't really transparent and aware. And we'll talk about what we mean by that in a little bit. Some of the times that matters, some of the times it doesn't. Uh, but again, you know, you have to actually get the traffic to it through the through the routing of the IP tables rules, things like that. So, um, you know, the, the proxying traffic through a known proxy means that you're doing less work. But again, it some of the time doesn't do what you want, or it's only for this protocol, and you've got this really great tool. But if you're not going up against that protocol, you still have to break the software somehow and get at the stream of data. So it's pretty important to us to. Uh, you know, solve this generically some of the time. So we're going to introduce Mallory now, talk a little bit about the architecture, and then get into some of the demos. Great. Um, so now I'm going to give you guys kind of a tour of the architecture. We have quite a few demos planned for the end, but uh, hopefully this won't last too long or be too painful. So uh, basically, this is our, our diagram. It's really straightforward. Uh, you have an application you're testing. You have a Mallory gateway somewhere in the middle. And then you have you know, access to the internet or you know, maybe a test network or something like that. Essentially, Mallory can be running on a lot of different places. And Raj will talk about, you know, he's really passionate about connecting things to Mallory. So we'll let him talk about that. But the important thing is Mallory is running on its own machine, usually a virtual machine, possibly a network or whatever. And traffic has to go through it. So that's like one of the key assumptions of how we implemented this. Because hardware is just dead cheap these days. So there's no excuse not to, you know, power up a virtual machine with a few hundred megabytes of RAM. Um, so uh, Mallory is a transparent aware proxy. And what we mean by that is kind of like Squid is transparent in some configurations where you can forward all the traffic for a machine to one TCP or UDP port, reach into the kernel, figure out what the real destination was, and send it on to the real destination. And that allows us to proxy the traffic because we can then take the client connection and make the real connection to the server and sit in the middle, standard man in the middle. Um, one of the things that we like about Mallory is that you decode protocols. So if you're going up against the known protocol like HTTP, we've added support for HTTP into the protocol. So you can do a little bit more than just generic TCP mangling of the, uh, of the data in the application. Um, and for the cases where a protocol doesn't work, you can always fall back to the TCP 
uh, version of the you know protocol handling where it can forward generically any kind of traffic that's TCP or UDP. And for TCP traffic, we have a GUI-based debugger, which essentially lets you you know pause traffic, modify it, and then send it on to its destination, regardless of the protocol or where it's coming from. So we we like that a lot. We think it's uh, it saves us time. Um, and you know, as we were developing it, we realized that if you're man in the middling an entire Ethernet interface, you're going to get a lot of extraneous traffic. You might only be interested in the traffic going from from the victim to the server, and you might only want it for one specific port or even a specific payload match. So we developed a pretty sophisticated rule system to make sure that you're only getting traffic that you're actually interested in in the GUI because it can get a little overwhelming if you have 4,000 rows of stuff and you really only need 10 of those rows. So we tried to make it user friendly because you know we, we've, we've dog fooded this pretty heavily internally. So uh, that's, uh, we tried to make it really nice for us first. And, Everyone else should uh, hopefully like it. Um, th this this uh, developed through a kind of chain of uh, different tools and ideas, and a lot of people have helped us out along the way. So uh, these are some of the people that helped us. Uh, Mike Zussman started the uh, original EV proxy that kind of gave us some of the initial ideas for this, because uh, we started out with just an SSL man in the middle proxy, and we it just kind of grew out of control from there. Aaron Rhodes helped us with a lot of testing and uh, you know some a lot of ideas. He's kind of an idea factory. Um, Raj obviously helped code this thing a lot. It was originally named Shibupi, but the marketing department said that that was not a, uh, a correct name. So <laughs> we renamed it Mallory because it was pretty funny. Uh, there wasn't an actual tool out there that had picked the name Mallory from the traditional crypto examples, you know, Alice, Bob, and Eve. And Eve is always watching. And we said, well, there now has to be a Mallory. So uh, that's where the name came from. That was Aaron's idea. Uh, Adam Pridgen helped out. He's committed some code and helped out with an Pretty much the whole Intrepidus crew has committed ideas to us and said, oh, it should do this, oh, it should do that. And uh, you know, we've tried to make it better and better. And uh, it's still a work in progress, but it's, it's very uh, useful now. Uh, so some of the things that Mallory does. When we say a protocol in Mallory, that means that we've implemented code to decode and interpret that protocol as a set of objects that a programmer can manipulate. Uh, it's, it's a very uh, you know, uh, hands-on process implementing a protocol, not as hands-on using an already implemented protocol, but it's, it's very neat. Um, Mallory currently knows some pretty big common internet protocols, HTTP, HTTPS, SSL, DNS, and SSH. Um, those are the only ones we've implemented so far, so if we, don't, if we come across something that isn't using that or it doesn't work with that, then we fall back to the TCP mode or you know, other tools, but uh, generally it works pretty well. Um, Plugins are specific to each protocol. So um, if, if you want to implement a plugin that lets you do something like, say, session hijacking of uh, HTTP traffic, uh, you can do that with a plugin because plugin code is isolated even further from having to set up sockets and all that. You pretty much are given objects, you manipulate them, you return them back to the stream in the middle, and you know it, it makes it a lot easier because there are so many layers of abstraction that you don't have to know a whole lot about Mallory to write a plugin just a little bit of Python and, uh, I guess, some motivation. Um, so uh, plugins are extensible for all your man-in-the-middle needs when, when there's a protocol that's implemented well. So uh, we tried to make Mallory a generic TCP and UDP debugger, but also a platform for developing man-in-the-middle tools uh, that help you on assessments. Um, and then we have a lot of options just to, like, proxify traffic. So. If you don't need to reach into the kernel, if you know the destination, you can say, OK, just throw all this traffic coming in from this Ethernet interface to you know, this HTTP debugger. And then you can just use your standard tool chain to assess the application. Um, so here are some of the places that Raj has uh, routed traffic through Mallory. Yeah, so the big thing about Mallory, is it's pretty versatile, right? It's generic TCP, generic UDP debugger. Uh, the other cool thing is that you can put it in a very many form factors. We have, it, we have it currently running on like all these form factors. So for example, we have it running at an access point at the office. Say we get a new mobile application, we just put it up on our phone, connect our phone to the access point, and now we have all the traffic going out of our phone into this access point into Mallory, where we can pause the traffic no matter what protocol it is, no matter what port it's going over, with no configuration other than connect to the Wi-Fi access point, pause this traffic, edit this traffic, fuzz it, and continue. Another fun one is the, the VPN concentrator where, say, you have OpenVPN on some kind of a device and you want to 
take any traffic going into this device and just throw it out to some Mallory appliance out on the internet and now you have this just thing on the internet that you can have multiple Mallory appliances all over the world just putting it there, you can pause it, record it, apply image flipping plugins maybe, data aggregation plugins if you want, you know, imagination is the, the limit there. Uh, we have it on the VMs that we're going to use for the demos and you can put it on a netbook if you're like bored and you need a more powerful, let's say, Wi-Fi access point to do a lot more processing on more streams. But it's really cool, it's really versatile, that's what we, we like a lot. Um, for this specific, uh, all the demos you're going to see just now, this is the, essentially the, um, the network topology. We have a VM that represents the Mallory Gateway, which is the router. We have a Windows XP box, which is the client that will be running all the applications and generating the traffic. Um, if we had internet, it, it would be connected to that cloud, but we came prepared because we don't have internet. So we have a mock internet called example.com that's connected to Mallory and all that is is every box has a host file that points to that, uh, that local IP. So we can show all the demos without internet access. All right, uh, we've actually released uh, Mallory now. So uh, if you go to bitbucket.org, you can download the source code using Mercurial. Um, this slide deck is also available on our website um, so that because it's a little, the, the, the um, slide decks that are currently available are a little out of date, so our website has the most current slide deck and all the information for how to get the tool and where it lives and all that. Um, so it's available now. Uh, you kind of have to set up your own virtual machine with Ubuntu 10.04 right now. That's our recommended platform, but uh, we have set up instructions and it's, it's pretty easy. It's just installing a bunch of packages and running a few IP tables uh, rules and that's it. Um, Mallory does require root, so the assumption is that you're going to run this on a completely isolated machine uh, because it does need to reach into the kernel to uh, query kernel objects, things like that. Um, it's already usable as a malicious uh, access point, uh, and you know, people, anyone could connect to your access point, but uh, a lot of applications more or less force you to connect them to a wireless access point to assess them, so it has a lot of fun purposes as well. Um, I won't really belabor the point of all these dependencies, but these are all just uh, Ubuntu packages, so it, it makes life easy. There's no, you know, compile these 84 things, and if you're lucky and your C compiler was the right version, everything went in, went in properly. You just got to install the packages, download a couple dev files, and, and have at it. Uh, this also highlights the strength of the Python ecosystem, because for the protocols that we implemented, we just had to tweak things. We didn't really have to, you know, sit down and say, "All right, let's take out the HTTP RFC and implement this stuff." You know, we just yanked uh, HTTP lib from the core Python code and had at it. Um, so, a quick comparison of uh, some of the various proxies that we use uh, from time to time, uh, and we kind of um, we tried to pick categories we thought would that are reasonable here. Um, so uh, transparent aware, I've kind of talked about our concept of transparent aware. Obviously, you know, uh, guys like Ettercap that are doing their own art poisoning and stuff, they're, they're obviously aware that they're transparently man in the middling, but they're not doing it, you know, by querying a kernel and, you know, dealing with it at layer three or whatever. So, you know, in, in that sense, you know, squid is, you know, very often considered a transparent proxy when, and it does almost the exact same thing Mallory does, but it only does it for HTTP. So um, that's what we mean by transparent aware. Um, extensibility was a really big thing, and a lot of these uh, are extensible to, a lot of these proxies here are extensible to a greater or lesser extent. Um, and our goal was to make extensibility one of the main features of Mallory, um, you know, for programmers ourselves, and you know, hopefully as a platform for man in the middle tools that uh, people can reuse. Um, Programmatic in-stream modification, meaning NetSed style features where you can run a regex on a TCP stream and it can be a binary, you can specify hex bytes or whatever and really get at the data. We have a neat demo for that, uh, you know, monkeying with a VNC stream. Uh, manual in-stream modification where you can pause a TCP stream and modify the traffic and then send it on its way. We have a nice GUI for doing that. And then handling non-HTTP traffic because HTTP is so ubiquitous, um, a lot of proxies only focus on that, and with good reason. But you know, we still get stuck having to assess apps that don't do that. Uh, so Mallory is a standard UDP and TCP server. Talking a little bit about the architecture here, it just sits there and listens for incoming sockets. We don't we don't worry about 